Hey my friends, Yarrow here, and today I am out in the woods hunting saprophytes. That's right, these are the plants that don't produce their own chlorophyll. They're a unique subset that's kind of like a mushroom, kind of like a plant, but what they actually do is pull off of the communication and intelligence between the trees and the fungi. And I think, for this reason, they actually work like an overarching nervine for the entire forest. I've been really interested in these for years, and so today I wanted to make a little video to share with you a little bit about them. Now they're everywhere. They're all around us. And right now, in the early summer, is the best time to find them. So come along, and let me show you a little bit about them, what they do, and how they might be useful for us as medicine. There's something a little secretive about saprophytes because they're hiding down in the ground. Like right around here, you might not notice this if you walk by, but look here, saprophyte. There's another one over here, a couple over here, wow. Here's a whole one. This is known as a type of ground cone. Some people call this gnome plant or just cone plant. Literally, it's in the blueberry family, yet like all saprophytes, doesn't produce any chlorophyll. This doesn't make it entirely parasitic because I really believe that the mycelial connection that it has gets some benefit out of creating a relationship with these types of plants. But this one is not one that's been used much as medicine, but definitely is one that I'm really interested in and have made tincture in the past and found it to have a very similar effect to some of the more predominantly known ones like the ghost pipe. So this little cone plant is very similar to the ghost pipe, which shoots up more of a bended stem, and yet this one just really is a kind of a in the ground one. As you can see here, they're all flowering right now. It is my belief that these work like a nervine for the entire forest, calming down the overwhelm. They live in the intersection between two of the most intelligent networks and intelligent designs in the forest, that is the trees, and the mycelial layer. Most of these symbiose with one type of mycelium and one type of tree, which is really interesting. Now, they can often symbiose with different ones, but they'll pick one predominant one in one forest and that's what they'll work with. This one I've seen to be uh, symbiose with mostly russulas, but also the pine mushroom the, and that type of mushroom. So what's interesting to me is that the mushrooms have this sort of horizontal network of communication, intelligence, and fast movement between its type of intelligence. And the trees have this accumulated intelligence that's more vertically integrated, so they're, they're holding knowledge over a period of time, whereas the mushrooms are transferring knowledge continually in the now. So in that intersection, there's a massive amount of information, and that's right where these guys live right in that space in between. So that's part of the reason that we think of them as this kind of calming down nervine that helps deal with all of the information in the forest and slows it down and just kind of dissects it. When we look at some of the medicines from these type of plants, we see, especially ones like ghost pipe, which are most commonly known and most research is done on, that they have this deep sense of helping deal with the overwhelm, of calming down the system, of raising the pain threshold. That's where these come in as magic in medicine. So when I come into a forest like this, a really healthy forest, where we've got open landscape, more mature trees, lots of deadfall, that's when I start to see these. And I don't see them anywhere else. You can't really propagate any of these kinds of plants. These saprophytes need to be in harmony with the environment around them. Now around the world, there's around 3,000 of these, right? There's quite a few. So they're all over the place, but specifically only in those older growth forests. So that's where we are today. And that's just one reason, if there aren't so many other reasons, to keep these forests healthy, vibrant, and living. We got a couple of these cone plants, these gnome plants, these cute little ones that are down here tucked into the turf. We're gonna go look for some that stand upright, all right? There's a few right behind us. I and mean, I've seen a few different ones all through here. One of the more common ones is this coral root. Now this one, the medicinal qualities of it have been shown to help kind of with the lungs and just help support soothing the body, but it's really the root. I don't really want to pick it because it's the only one I see right here, but you can kind of feel down, feel into the root system there. Yep, it's tucked way down in there. 
This is a neat one. We'll see when we find a whole bunch more of these, we might pick one, but this is another great saprophyte. Right here, right next to it, we have this candy stick. Now this one is amazing because it's got such a bright, kind of looks like a candy cane, right? These bright red coloring. This is a classic indicator of a pine mushroom forest, Matsutake, yes. This is one of the mushrooms of elusive mystery. One of the mushrooms that lives under the turf and supposedly this saprophyte lives right off of it. It's an Aliotropa, similar to the Monotropas in that same family, but just a little different species. I'm just gonna get off the path and see what else we can find right in this little thing. Oh, whoa. And it just popped right up. Now you see, there's a bunch of them kind of just growing underneath here. Those are the same species, but just one's got more light and one's got less. It's always good to see who else is in the forest with us. Other mushrooms. So this one is Dutchman's pipe, which is most closely related to the ghost pipe. It's a type of monotropa, and literally this one has a little bit of that pink to it and produces multiple flowers in the same stalk, whereas the ghost pipe is uh, translucent and has more of a bend and produces only a single floret on each stalk. But these whole monotropas are some of the main ones that have been used clinically and are some of the best ones for helping deal with pain and overwhelm and both emotional and physical as well as spiritual. So we're gonna maybe pick one or two of these, kind of give you a full, see if I can get right down to the, to the root of this. Got one right here. You can see it has a natural break where it'll break off there. But this guy is one of my favorites. I've made tincture with this a number of times uh, and it is a good substitute for the ghost pipe, which is again, the one that's got most of the clinical studies behind it, but literally, this tincture, what's so neat about it to me is when I make the tincture, it starts after three or four days, it starts to turn this kind of translucent blue and then it goes into a dark black. And so it becomes this really, even though it's this light color, it's got this black, black tincture. And much of the chemistry in this supposedly really helps deal with the pain threshold. So it's like an analgesic but rather than uh, numbing pain, it allows our body to feel the, or to know the pain is there, but not to feel it so much. So it increases our pain threshold. And this works on many, many levels. Besides that, these monotropas have been used specifically for things like seizures and muscle spasms and epilepsy and overwhelm. Now, an example that, uh, a couple of different herbalists use is using them in overwhelm situations where people are on entheogenic drugs. Now I've tried this too, brought a tincture of this to a music festival and when people are tripping out, literally give them a few drops of this, it helps calm them down, bring them back into their body. Half of this is due to this overwhelm of this kind of sensory gating channels being uh, exploding for people. So. This is a plant that can be used for that, but also overwhelm in our life. So if we're too stressed out, if we're feeling like we aren't fitting in or we got too much on the go, a couple of drops of a ghost pipe or a Dutchman's pipe tincture can just calm down the body, just relax it and bring it back into a state of balance again. That's why I think these are nervines in the forest. They're literally helping calm down the whole energetic exchange between communication channels using the wise old trees and the diverse and wide spreading mycelial mats. So I really, really have a great appreciation for all these saprophytes. We're gonna harvest just a couple of them today and I'll talk a little more about each different one, but know that these are a special, special medicine for the forest. And if we wanna work with them, we wanna be really just careful to take only as much as we need and make sure we're harvesting out of places where they're in abundance. I'm in a spot right now where I know these are in abundance, but I'm very cautious to pick these unless I've seen a lot of them because they are unique and they only grow in these types of ecosystems. So we want to be careful not to 
to pick too many of them and to do it ethically. If we don't need to work with them, we don't pick them. We just come out and enjoy them in the forest. If we want to make medicine with this, the best thing to do is to harvest the whole plant, chop it up into pieces while it's fresh, and tincture it in a two to one alcohol, which means two parts alcohol by the milliliters to one part plant by the grams. That's a true kind of fresh tincture. Usually 50% alcohol is good for this. But if you're doing it in the layman's method, you literally just chop it all up, fill the jar with alcohol, all right? That's how you make your tincture. Shake that up for two weeks to a month, and then it's single drops, right? Maximum a milliliter, but really just a couple of drops is all you need to help calm down the body. So some of my personal experience working with the Monotropa has really been around pain and helping to increase my pain threshold. One day I was riding down the road on my bike and went to answer my cell phone, probably not the best idea. Anyway, answered my cell phone, uh, totally bailed, crashed, got my whole arm rubbed up, like just scarred up with this bleeding and was really like in shock. My body was in shock, literally. And I came home and I'm like, oh, what do I have for pain? I remembered the monotropa tincture I had made, took a couple of drops of that and I still felt it, but my pain threshold had gone way up and I was able to calm down that overwhelm and just really get back into my body. This is how this type of medicine works. It allows us to increase our pain threshold when we're in a traumatic situation and calms down the overwhelm. This one's just so stunning. I've seen these grow all the way up to two feet tall, but as you can see why it's called candy stick or sugar stick is another name for it, but it literally looks like that candy cane. Now here's a great example of an Aleotropa. And again, this is one of the ones that shows up specifically with the pine mushroom, right? So it's definitely a common indicator that we're in the right forest for good Matsutake. There's not a lot of studies done on this, but I really, really believe that it works kind of similar to the monotropas where we've got that general nervine for the forest. So we're gonna just pick one. We'll take one of these little ones. I'm gonna dig right down to the underground part. There we go. You can see how the root is quite a bit bigger. I really believe that there's a lot of benefit to this plant, and yet it hasn't been researched very well or very deeply and used much. So here's one that I'm gonna make an experimental tincture with this year and start testing it out and playing with it with various people, myself included, because I really am curious about these plants. I've been curious about them for years and I've worked with a couple of them and had great results in kind of calming down the body, bringing me back into my own body and dealing with personal overwhelm and pain. So we found three different saprophytes in this forest, each one being unique and yet they also have some similarities. None of them produce their own chlorophyll. All of them take energy from the trees and the mycelium and support back the network, not entirely parasitic, but more as a saprophytic energy, which means they're pulling off of the system, yet giving something back to it. And all of them are in the blueberry family, the Heath family, and each one of them, I believe, can be used as a strong, supportive, Nervine for dealing with overwhelm and dealing with any kind of health issues around pain management. So we're gonna make a tincture with each one of these and play with them this year. I'll let you know how that goes. But if you've had any experience working with saprophytes, including ghost pipe, I really, really wanna hear from you. I want to know from this community, anyone who's worked with these plants before. I am most curious about learning more about saprophytes and starting to work with them as medicine. As I believe we're in a world right now where all of us are dealing with too much information and too much overwhelm. And here is a plant that shows up in a way that can support that, that can support our own emotional pain, our physical pain, our spiritual pain, in a way that's gonna help ground us back in to being part of the larger system, right? These work as that third set, not a plant, not an animal, not a fungi, but the kind of symbiosis in between using that energy 
of all of the forest creatures to support life. I think there's more up here, so come along. Let's go see what else we can find. Yep. There's a couple more. Here's another one. These are last year's monotropa. Old, new. More of these cone plants. So they're all sharing the same ecosystem, possibly the same mycelial connection and possibly even the same tree root system. One of my favorite things about hunting plants like this is actually getting into the woods. Similar to the way I like to get in the woods for mushrooms, it's just kind of weaving in and out of the trees, getting off the beaten path. Look at that. There's a nice stand. Yeah. Look at this stand, right beside it. I can't stress it enough that even though I'm in a forest of abundance where there's lots of these around, they do not transplant. These plants are only found wild. And so it's important for us to keep wild stands of them nice and healthy, which means not harvesting too many of them or only harvesting them when they're in the right season and we have a lot of abundance around these plants. Also, I'd like to stress that this is a magical plant. Right. This has some type of magical potency to it. In my mind, it works far beyond the physical. And so when we're working with plants like this, it's definitely special for those people who have their own challenges with sensory gating channels, or I believe things like Asperger's and ADD or muscle spasms and neurodivergence of different forms. So I really think plants like this work in a healthy way for supporting people with a different type of neurobiology. Whatever that might be, that's the kind of medicine. If you want to learn more, just dig in, explore, have fun, play with these medicines. They're an interesting one to just be around and get to know in your forests. Like I said, there's over 3,000 of them around the world. So there's a lot of different ones and they're probably all around you already in the healthy ecosystems in your part of the world. All right, so we've explored a few. We're gonna just keep going and see what else we can find. I know there's lots more stands and even if I'm not harvesting them, I just like to go check them out, hang out with them and spend a bit of time with them. So let's go see if we can find more saprophytes. another kind of ground cone here and I'm gonna pick this one there's a few more sprinkled throughout this forest but just so you can actually get a good look at this this one is a really interesting saprophytic plant that grows again off the mycelial and tree roots it's probably the next most common one in my opinion to the Dutchman's pipe in this forest I'm tickled by my day in the woods. I hope you enjoyed this journey. And if you want to learn more about plant medicine, subscribe, check out our videos, really dial into what we're trying to offer and tell us what you want to hear. We'd love to hear from you on the saprophytes as well as any other plant you want to know more about. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Peru.